Welcome back everyone to It's Dangerous to Go Alone. I'm Lily Groovy Red. You can call me Lily and I'm here with Splatroid. We'll be taking you through uh, the next two sets of uh, the preliminary rounds of Power Bracket now. Uh, we heard a few, we had a few interesting things that the, our analysts said about the next, uh, next couple of map modes. Uh, Splatroid, Droid, I'm wondering what do you think of what we'll be seeing here on Mako Zones? Mako Zones is going to be a very good map for sloshers, just like back in Tower, like we saw earlier. And if there's just like any kind of really aggressive uh, shooter or or slosher will be really good for getting around the stacks or the zones and just keeping control. Never know, You never know when somebody might pop up because this is a really good sharking map for any kind of frontliner. And it yeah, seems speaking we've... of sharking, actually, it does look like Axel might be playing the might be playing some sh very sharky weapons on the side of Jaded Judo with not only the carbon but also an ink brush, which could be could be a pretty good uh, could be a pretty good sharking choice. I've got to say, but you know what, with um with the the buckets on Cowardly Cobweb as a potential as a potential option here, um we might be even seeing uh, some very very uh difficult moments for uh for jd judo to try and take control of those stacks here on mako zones yeah and i see that they've got a uh squeezer one trick on jaded judo and that's gonna be that's gonna be very aggressive in when you when there's a squeezer you, you squeezers are scary when there's they're they know how to use it so that's definitely gonna be they're gonna hold back the sloshers if when they can and have to just make sure they're not caught by surprise from them Oh yeah, Squeezer can definitely catch people by surprise. It really comes down to being able to position in a very safe area that you can that you can just like make use of the range that you have. And also, um, I find that like having a wall uh, can also really help with uh, with taking control over um, like specific areas as well. It does look like we are going to the game at the moment. I'm very excited to see uh, what they bring to the table here. We are seeing, however, a Zagafin. We're seeing like a double wall comp on zones. Now, this is quite interesting. It does mean that they kind of uh, lose out on bombs, but we might be uh, we might be restarting this match in just a moment. Yeah, it looks like we might we might just have to restart this match. But yeah, I, I gotta say, actually, um, I think having uh, having the double wall comp was kind of interesting um, for for zones, and it does not mean it's gonna be difficult to difficult to make the other team from being able to uh, push past that little alley or, or breakfast. I always prefer calling it breakfast because it's like a funnier. It's it's just it's just it's just a better call out name for it. I love the I actually really love the the, the names of call outs here on uh, on Macro Mart. Yeah, the goofy callouts are always the best ones, and the, you're you're exactly right with the walls. They'll definitely be able to hold off the out the breakfast or alley, and and they're and also in the middle with the zone in the bag. You'll be able to they'll be able to help hold off the sides of the bag, and they'll have to go around. The other team will have to go around them real like fast because th that's a really good place to hold them i know i struggle with, against walls on this on this this map mode for sure yeah definitely so i think i do think that like even if you don't have the options to like bomb players out and actually like push in and take zones with those bombs as well having those walls i reckon is definitely going to be a uh, definitely gonna be a strong choice here We might just have to still wait for a few moments to uh, before we go back into the game. Um, I know, actually, I think on the side of Jaded Judo, uh, Nub is uh, Nub has been like a junior player for quite a long time, and having the support as well, having the really strong, consistent paint output, I reckon it's going to definitely help um, have specials online, especially if uh, if it's something like Tactical or as well, because I do see that they are playing. Um, playing some weapons with very good, uh, very good, very common specials, especially in this meta as well with the tactic cooler. Actually, you know what, Super Chomps. What do you reckon of Super Chomps in this meta? Ever Super? since like the patch happened. Since the the patch, they've been a lot better for sure. But I I still still don't see how they work too well yet. No, at least not against the current like crab and everything. 
but they seem to be they're, they're slowly rising and i think they could still be good like maybe at least on zones for just distracting and like to go around like in this zone specifically since it's one one big zone and now the radius of the chumps are a lot bigger i think it could actually be very good for distracting them with the jumps all right it looks like we are going into the game at the moment we have our players already and waiting and we are once again actually not seeing jumps but we are actually seeing uh, a try -slusher. the only bucket in this game at the moment. It's kind of unusual to see only one bucket in a, you know, Mako Zones match, but here we have it with that tri -slush. It does look like they already go down, and uh, Cowardly Cobweb is gonna be trying to take control over um, over Jaded Judo's uh, stack over here. Definitely gonna make it difficult for them to be able to move in as they as the score keeps pushing down into the 70s for Jade, for, sorry, Cowardly Cobweb. But, you know, I reckon this crab is going to have something to save for that to try and help the team push back in. But I don't think it's quite enough to help them just yet. And that's two down for on Calorie Cobweb. So, uh, so Jaded Duo should be able to, it was able to get some penalty points on the zone, which is really good because they were going down really fast. And they just need to get their specials back to push back here. They're popping the tactical or they're all, they all, they're all juiced up, ready to go. And the hammer throw almost snipes one, and that's a really good snipe on the inkjet from the Seco Finn. You, uh... Yeah, absolutely, a very, very good snipe. This is uh, Cowley Cobweb still having their numbers to down, but it does look like the zone gets neutralized and Jaded Judo with the help of that inkjet. Two inkjets at once actually getting those picks as well, helping them secure that zone and making the score run down. It does look like their, um, their bull point does go down. And we can see Nub here noticing a noticing a a bit of a bit of trouble happening over the side there, but we're going to be making sure at least that with control of the stack, or at least trying to clear players out as much as possible uh, from the other side, they can at least try and get some more control over the zone. But with three players going down, a kind of soft white here, Jaded Judo is going to be using this opportunity to really start pushing up and continue their push, perhaps even getting lead here, Droid. Yeah, they got the lead there. They're, they have control of the map. They have a lot of paint on the map and already and keeping them back in. But Cowardly Cobweb does have three specials. They pop the inkjet, and, uh, the the Zuka, and their strikes and the crab, and they're they're definitely getting the cap there because a few went down on uh, Jaded Duo. Well, they're just trying to find anyone that might have been sharking to the side. And looks like they're gonna have to jump out here. The crab trying to keep any keep control of the mid slowly. The try does get one, almost another. The wipers there goes the wiper too, and that's three down on Cowardly Cobweb. So Jaded Duo can have Judo have have more points. Yeah, that was a wipeout that we saw actually. Jaded Judo using this opportunity once again to push up and really pressure that sniper. Are getting a great pick? Oh, three down on the side of Cowboy Cobweb as well. This looks this looks like Jaded Judo is really um, in the position they want to be. This is definitely going to be something difficult for Cowboy Cobweb to break out of at the moment, having to deal with these flanks, having to deal with all these all this like paint from uh, Jaded Judo around them as well. But you know, with those two players down, actually. I don't think they're able to push back out. Looks like the game ends up going to Jaded Judo there as they finally managed to take the score all the way down to zero. It was a little bit of a tricky push um, for them to get in at the start, but once they had that lead, I have to say, um, definitely managed to manage to really find their footing and know exactly uh, know exactly when and how to uh, push up and stop Cowardly Cobweb from being able to retake the zone at any point they tried. Uh, yeah, the tri slusher really was able to get in after they got that lead and was ready to hold them off for quite a while, and that really that worked really well. And they had con complete control of the mid, which stopped uh, Cowardly Cobweb from getting back after that. And it was just like a one downhill slope, and Jaded Joe was just able to get the knockout off of that. 
Yeah, absolutely. We I do remember, however, the initial push was really strong from Cowardly Cobweb and uh, them knowing that they have to take uh, Jaded Judo's stack as well just to make sure that they have as much control they have, as much high ground as possible. We're seeing those tri strikes come out as well. Definitely the plays that they wanted to be able to get that initial first push. And it was like a really good push as well, down to like the low 40s as well. That's something that is always going to be very strong on uh, Splat Zones and can be like a little bit tricky to kind of retake from if you manage to not only get that big of a lead but also be able to position far ahead enough to really like retain that as well unfortunately however i do think how the cobweb once uh once jaded judo managed to get a lead off of them unfortunately just couldn't break out there they couldn't retain the space that they really wanted to take up in that game Yeah, and uh, we'll they just held them off to... really well at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be going on to uh, Humpback Pump Track. I wonder if they'll be bringing out any similar strategies here. Droid on Rainmaker Humpback. I know that this one can go uh, can go pretty fast. Yeah, it can be a complete downhill slope after the first checkpoint here. Because once you get that first checkpoint, you just have to go through... Uh, if, if you can just get one and a half wipeouts, that's just to like instantly a knockout. And if we're starting up here and there is the Tri Slasher and Squeezer coming back. And that's the Slasher coming out instead on the other side. Yeah, I'm curious to see uh, how they make these buckets work for them. Because I know that when you have like the, the kind of interesting curvy... Uh interesting geometry in this map you can definitely uh get some really good value out of the bucket class for sure and it does look like one player has already gone down on the side of jaded judo um but it looks like also cavalry cobweb loses their try slash here it is still a bit of a fight for mid at the moment but you know jaded judo is already going for that checkpoint they see the clear path and they actually managed to take it with the rest of the team already pushing up ahead um into cowardly cobwebs window at the moment making sure they can clear them out as much as possible looks like we are seeing a very very big push here and they just have to get through this they have the um ink chair that they have to fight against pushing them back and also the ink flag i have to say droid ink flag is a very uh very interesting very fun choice to see in this current meta droid yeah, it definitely seems to be working a little bit better in Rainmaker nowadays because it can really hold off choke, destroy whole, whole choke points and keep them from pushing as it did there and was able to keep, keep them from getting anywhere past 39 and they are just trying to get back in the in the mid but they do, and they do seem to get three up, down on Jaded Duo so Cowardly Cobweb trying to push up and get the mid but it's a 2v2 here. Lily. Yeah, it is. We have, uh, we have, like, we have to see like one of the teams or the other team try to like win one of these fights and try to take control here. We're seeing how the cobweb slowly trying to move up and just make sure that they have the space in front of the uh, in front of the rainmaker before they even think about picking it up. Here, they do have their specials coming out with that Zuka with that ink jet as well. But they're going to be trying. They're going to be bumped out by Jaded Judo here, and also with the crab tank coming in to stop any attempt at a push as well. It does look like Jaded Judo is actually coming back and retaking mid as well and trying to look for some big spot. Unfortunately, their, uh, their bucket does go down, but they do have the Rainmaker. The Rainmaker does seem to be getting that player stuck in there. They couldn't, they barely got away somehow. And there's just one da down on Powerly Cobweb. As, and so they can't really push off of that. That's two, two go down on Jaded Duo. And they're really, they, that was good defense with that inkjet. C kept them back at the right uh, point because they were stuck in that choke point by that checkpoint. And they couldn't really do anything about it because they couldn't swim backwards, Lily. Yeah, no, I want to be able to see Powerly Cobweb find an opportunity for them to actually get some points on the table for them because we have just over two minutes left that they haven't quite got anything yet. Every single attempt that we've seen um, has kind of been bombed out by Jaded Judo as well, but we are seeing them actually, uh, actually get a crab tank out and actually start moving up kind of slowly towards that first checkpoint. It does look like they are going to be pushed back a little bit by those shrine strikes, but they do manage to find an opportunity to get it in at that moment and try go for the next one with the help of that ink once again, trying to like make 
that crab tank as minimally as effective as possible on the side of Jaded Judo. They are going to be running it, they are going to be seeing if they can get a lead off here, but it's very difficult to see them, I believe, push it up with any like any speed here. Nub here on the on the Rainmaker just playing very, very patiently, knowing that if they go down, that's going to be the end of that push, unfortunately, for them, Droid. Three go down on the Cowardly Cabweb, and they almost got that push out there. They got the checkpoint, but they couldn't get past there because of the specials. The strikes and the whale came out at good times when they were all stuck in the choke, so they got them out of there, got Nub out of the, with the Rainmaker. And that's and there's e even more defense from Cowardly Cobweb ready for it. Uh, Jaded Duo to try to make a push, but they were not able to do it because they were there with the Charger. The Charger got a really nice double there, and now it's a Crab Tank fight, just trying to control the mid, trying to control where that a Rainmaker is. Nobody can go there without getting splatted, really. Uh, Lily. Yeah, absolutely, and those, those Crab Tanks now out of the picture and one play down the Jaded Judo. I think Cowardly Cobweb, with the help of this Inkjet, I want to see them be able to uh, paint up as much of mid as they can to be able to push in as well and try and stop uh, Jaded Judo from pushing them out, but it is going to be very difficult for them, especially with those um, that really nice double from Knife as well. Knife has, been, Knife has been getting some really good consistent picks throughout this game, so this has been definitely working wonders for Cowardly Cobweb to, to make sure that Jaded Judo's numbers are down as much as possible to stop them from being able to find that opportunity to pick up the Rainmaker. We only have a couple seconds left and it looks like that game ends right there. Droid. Yeah, the crab was, team like, uh, was just ready yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, that game, I, I really enjoyed seeing how Cowardly Cobweb were able, able to finally find that opening to take that first checkpoint, but like throughout the game I noticed that uh, Jaded Judo was definitely bombing them out and also like pushing them back with very effective tri-strikes as well before they were able to like find that opening to actually take the checkpoint, but Cowardly Cobweb on the other hand when they had that first checkpoint that was very, very clear for them to take it. They didn't have to deal with the kind of defense that they were pushing on Jaded Judo uh, throughout any attempts that they tried to push as well. So I reckon it definitely worked out in their favor. Um, anytime Cowardly Cobweb tried to, uh, anytime Jaded Judo tried to push, but Cowardly Cobweb's, uh, Cowardly Cobweb, when they did manage to push in, when they did have the ink fact to help them support, unfortunately, I think it was just. Uh, just not quite enough for them to deal with uh, Jaded Judo's defense droid. Yeah, Jaded Ju Ju Judo was able to have that paint and keep them back in their own base because the, the VAC was stopping them from uh, controlling that one spot, but they couldn't be get past that one couldn't get past the checkpoint because there was just too much paint from Jaded Ju Duo Judo to that kept them from getting any farther at all. Yeah, I gotta say though, like in this replay when we do see the ink fact come out, uh, that was a really good uh, stop to like prevent cow. Uh, sorry, to prevent Jaded Judo from being able to actually move that Rainmaker up too far. So we did see like some uh, really really good uh, ink fact moments in this game. Anyway, I have to say, Droid. Yeah, the ink fact was very well played. Like they did it, they used it at very opportune moments, especially with that defense. Like you were talking about, they they stopped them from getting any farther than when they launched it off. It got it got the rainmaker, and they were able to push up and get two more, and they were able to get a little. They were able to get a push off of that, and it all worked out there. Yeah, absolutely. We will be going to the third game, which is Tower Control Manta Maria. Now, I often find that this can be a bit of a tug of war. I always describe this map mode as a, as a bit of a tug of war because you know that like getting through those checkpoints, actually getting past mid can be a pretty big ordeal here, Droid. But I'm curious what you think uh, we'll, be, we'll be seeing here. Yeah, Manta Tower, the ink, if they bring back that ink vac, then it, it will be very good for the, because there are very, like, there are smaller choke points for the checkpoints and stuff for the ink vac to be able to stop pushes and keep them out of there and, like, just launch it in very small spots and usually get at least a pick or two. Yeah, we are seeing actually the Hydra Splatline come out, which is interesting. I think it would be a good choice as well, having the Booyah Bomb online to be able to clear out those choke points which can be kind of small and then like definitely help them to uh definitely help them to have a little bit of extra support getting those uh getting those 
um, <laughs> what are they called again? The checkpoints as well. We are seeing, however, a bit of a blah blah. Two players have gone down on either side. We are seeing Cobweb with the crab tank, but also James Judo returning with another crab tank as well. It is a fight for mid at the moment, but it does look like Jaded Judo, if they can find an opportunity to get out of the tower, I do believe they might be able to get something here. They got uh, actually, one I'm down. Not sure anymore. <laughs> yeah, they don't really have control of the map. Nobody. It's like just back and forth here, like one pick after the other on both sides. And the Zuka does come out and get gets one on the tri slasher, and Cowardly Cobweb is able to take control of the mid and get at least to the first checkpoint. While the Hydra is trying to keep keep control of the bunker, but cannot really do that. There's another person there too. And they're just all, they're all bunched up there and the Booyah Bomb does come out and gets the try hiding on the wall while they got past the checkpoint, gets another. The Hydra is there and ready and there's nobody there except for one, but there's too many from Cowardly Cobweb from them to deal with that. Actually, they do get to get those two, Lily. Yeah, you know, I have to say that oh, when that Zuka came out, I knew that this was the start of a pretty big push, especially all things considered on Mantamuria tower control and having that Booyah Bomb to follow up to help clear that next, or at least to help get them to that next checkpoint was definitely a very well timed, very well placed Booyah Bomb as well. But now we are seeing, uh, now we're seeing pushing the other dire direction from Jaded Judo. We can see the Inchat come out trying to clear out this top left area, hopefully try and stop any... Oh, actually, you know what? We can see a pretty well-painted street here, so this is going to help them get lead even, I gotta say, but have the cobweb, I think they have something to say about this. They are pushing back, especially with Nub on the crab tank here, trying to give them an opening to take back mid for their team droid. Yeah, and they were able to get back right after the lead, and that's not a big lead, so they can probably get that back pretty uh, w without too much difficulty if they can just keep control of the mid. And they did get another pick and have the paint around the mid, have the Booyah Bomb coming out on the choke point in the alley. And the Slasher's trying to contest the tower on their own and actually get scares the Hydra off, which is really good for them. The Crab Tank out, coming out from Nub doesn't even see the try, and the try almost manages to splat them, but doesn't managed to get that splat and to go down on Jaded Judo and Cowardly Cobweb has another chance to push a little bit more Lily. Yeah, uh, Cowardly Cobweb is definitely going to be taking this opportunity and running with it. We can see already the tower is going to the next checkpoint, perhaps being able to get a lead back off of Jaded Judo. And they just have to wait it out just for a couple of seconds. But unfortunately, Jaded Judo manages to push the off here, stopping that lead. They only managed to get one point and takes out Jaded. So sorry, sorry, takes out Cowardly Cobweb completely. So we can see them pushing up, taking that flank as well, getting the tactical out. They know that they. They know that they are in a dangerous position with only a score two points apart. They really need to be thinking about taking up as much space, making it as impossible for the other team to be able to push again as as they can. Yeah, and it seems like they pushed up a little too hard because they did get picked off one by a, a couple of them got, did get picked off, but they still have control of the mid. So uh, Cowardly Cobweb is two down and cannot really get a push off of that. But the Hydra just gets a really nice double, so they can't get over there. The try trying to just shark up and get them, but does barely misses them and gets splatted. And that's that's still Cowardly Cobweb trying to control the mid. They have, they almost have it, and they're yeah, really. Yeah, they almost have mid here. It does look like they are getting set up to do something as well. They need in these last 45 seconds to be able to get past that checkpoint. Neither team have cleared that checkpoint, and it's only a couple of seconds to be able to get that. We are seeing the crab tank, we are seeing the Zuka try and clear out that area as well. So this looks like this could be their opportunity to take a lead back off of them, but I don't know if they're able to do it. They do have someone on the tower, it looks like they do manage to get lead in these last 30 seconds, and they are continuing this push down into the 30 destroyed. Things are looking up for them as three plays have gone down the side of Jaded Judo, and Cowardly Cobweb are still making their push down to 21. It does look like they lose it here, but in these last... Last 10 seconds, I don't think they'll be able to get back onto the tower as three plays have gone down on Cal Cobweb. But you know what? JD Judo, they gotta take this into overtime. They they know that they, they have to make a really big overtime push to be able to come back off of Cal Cobweb. It's very, very impressive push there. We can see the a great pick from the Zuka happening here, but I don't know if 
Cowardly Cobweb, if they're able to actually come back and get them off, I think that this is going to be actually uh, the final game-winning push for Cowardly Cobweb. All they have to do is defend here, throw down with this crab tank coming out, but with the Inkjet coming out in the skies as well, just really trying to pressure them. They just need to throw everything they can this time to try and get them off here. It looks like with that double and with that second checkpoint being taken and three players going down on Jaded Judo, Cowardly Cobweb takes game three and takes the set. 3-0 against Jaded Judo. That was that was an exciting final 30 seconds of the game, I have to say. Droid, what did you think of that? Yeah, they almost got that there because the inkjet did distract Nub's crab from being able to like, focus on the tower because they were being shot at. So that was that was a really well timed inkjet, but it just wasn't enough with the when the hammer came out. That really got the last bit of them, and they just couldn't really do anything about it. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was definitely it was definitely an incredible. I have to say, um, seeing uh, seeing them take that uh that final actually seeing that seeing um i believe jaded judo actually take that final game i uh, think the colors mistake. were messed up possibly possibly yeah, yeah seeing seeing jaded judo actually take the uh take that final game it was definitely a great push um a great push from cowley cobweb into overtime or one of the teams anyway but you know we did see um we did see a very very impressive lead once again you know it is that it is that idea that this this fat mode is a little bit of a tug of war which i tend to see like the you never really know who's gonna win here i go, i i think droid you never really know <laughs> yeah you never really know that was that was back and forth the whole time and the comeback on this map is like it's really downhill and if you just have the specials at the right points they could have gotten that off they they were really close and they almost got it there but the hammer and the crab really stopped them from getting any far farther after that yeah, I gotta say, very impressive being able to take one game off of uh, Cowardly Cobweb. So uh, kudos to Jaded Judo in that final game. Cowardly Cobweb still takes the set, however. Um, they do still take the set, and we'll be hearing soon after we go in a little bit of a break. We'll be hearing from our analysts, Kirby and Rice, about what they have to say about what we just saw. All right, and welcome back to the analyst desk. So we don't really have too much time to go over this set as the next set is almost ready to start, but we can cover just the brief things that we saw. How, what did you think about this first uh, game on Splatoon's Mako, Kirby? Some very good sniper shots. I was, <laughs> was watching a lot of those and I really enjoyed seeing them. Like I, would, I was not even noticing them before until after they happened. Yeah, this Charger getting some really good snipes and something I did notice a lot from the Charger is their positioning. They knew when to move up and when to back off. They used the strikes at very good times either to cap zone or to help their team push up a little more. Um, but towards the end, just unable to, um, you know, really fight against the aggression that Jaded uh, Judo had. Yeah, the especially because we were talking about before, like the slosher being able to jump over like or slot hit over the walls and the ledges being a, a big thing, especially for this map. And I, they definitely took advantage of that. Yeah, for sure. And we'd see like um, <clears throat> Jaded uh, Judo, they they do have this more aggressive comp with a more uh, mobile backline of a ball point, whereas um, Cowardly Caldwebs had the charger so they needed to play a little slower and i think this was to the advantage of jada judo judo as every time they did they did have an aggressive push they got onto the enemy plat and made sure they held pressure up there yeah and at one point i think they both pulled out the the inkjet and they were both shooting around and it was causing mass like 
<laughs> panic and oh, like ki lots of kills happening at all at the same time and definitely like big distractions as well with double uh ink jets happening oh definitely having those two jets out it's it it's pretty much pick your poison right you either run away and someone else kills you or you look at the ink jet and they say hello you're dead now <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> it's a lot of that yeah, but moving on to the second map, I think, again, with the aggression on the side of Jada Judo, they had an overall advantage here, but there it was very back and forth, and I think um, the V Charger with that vacuum was really good. Yeah, I feel like we don't see that often with the vanilla or the original Charger using the vacuum. People tend to off, um, choose the one with the being strikes but yeah being able for them to be able to push forward and then uh, use it to defend a checkpoint and then now we're looking at the tower control game yeah and we see on this tower control game it was really back and forth and i have to say props to cowardly caldweb they got to the um to the second checkpoint and they were able to get past that um towards the end and they had the lead throughout this whole game and making sure that they kept up the pressure and the Hydra, I think, was the key to that on this map specifically. Yes. Um, I and, um, and I think um, this is pretty much it for us on the analyst test. Um, next set is ready and up for our commentators. So let's throw it back to Lily and Droid.